Hi, I'm Sean with Hawaii Information Service. In this video, we're going to be covering how to manage your listings in research. For best results, please watch this video in full screen and in high resolution. On YouTube, you'll find these controls in the lower right hand corner of the video player. The first thing we're going to do is click on this icon next to listings and then click on new listings. Now in research six, we have two different ways of entering a listing into our system. We have what we call our classic forms, which, which is what we used to have in research five. And we have our wizard forms. So using the wizard forms, you can enter your listing, you can add your photos, add any addendas, add any virtual tours, all from the same step. These two forms have two different options. We can either show just the required fields or we can show the full listing form. So I'm just going to be going over the wizard forms first and I'm going to be going over using the required only listing form. I'm going to click, um, I'm going to enter a tax key here. Click next. So now what we have here is we have a listing form with just the required fields. And you can tell these are required fields because of the asterisk next to each of the field. So each portion of your listing form is a section. So right here is a lister section. You have your listing basic section, your listing details, your property details, your contacts, your financial details, your driving direction slash remarks, and your signature. Using your form setup, you can show or hide any of these sections. You can uncheck these if we want to hide these. Or we can check them to show them. Using tabbed options, uh, you can tab through the different fields. So for example, if I had all fields checked, if I use the, the key tab, it's just going to allow me to tab through the listing form. If I had empty required fields, it would just tab through the fields that are empty. Now I know we selected just the required fields um, when we entered the new listing, but for example if you wanted to see the full listing form, uh, you wouldn't have to actually go all the way back out. We have the option of actually showing all fields here. So if we go ahead and click on show all fields, your listing form now shows all the fields, not just the required fields. And you'll notice just the required fields show up with that red asterisk. If we, once we've entered all our information here, we can go ahead and click next. We can enter our photos. Um, we have to agree to this photo agreement. Once we check this box, it allows us to continue. We can click on this blue load photos button here. Our new photo lore allows you to drag and drop photos into this little box. If not, we can actually click here to tab and browse for photos on our computer. So I'm just going to use, I'm just going to grab a couple of photos. Click open. And then go ahead and click upload. So now you're going to notice uh, we have a little preview of the photos. Right next to that we can enter our descriptions. We can delete the photos or we could move them using this um, little up and down icon here. If we just click and hold we can drag them back and forth like that. Once we finish uploading photos we can click save all and then click next. So step four is finalize your listing. So if we click save to holding status, uh, it's going to save into our holdings. If not, we can release the listing to active. 
We also have the option of adding addendas, attaching virtual tours, or scheduling open house using these links here. I'm just going to save the listing to holdings because it's incomplete and we wouldn't want to release that. And it tells us we've been successful, we have our MLS number, and that our listing is now saved into our holdings. So that's pretty much it for the, the, the wizard forms. I'm going to go ahead and show you what the classic forms look like. I'm just going to, since I use the required only, I'm just going to click on full now. I'm going to enter the same tax key, click create a new listing. And those of you using research five, this listing form should look pretty, pretty similar to what you're seeing. So we have our listing form. We can save it. We can release it from here. We also have the option of printing this form, emailing, or PDFing this form. So it's the same listing form. Uh, if we save here, the listing is going to be saved into our holdings and we have an MLS number. I'm going to go ahead and go back into our listing menu. So this listing menu here is um, where you're going to find all of your functions to manage your listings. If you want to change the status of your listing or if you wanted to update um, any of the listing data you can do that from here. You can also uh, manage your photos, um, you can add open houses, um, add your tours, add addendas, all from this listings dashboard page. So if we wanted to um, record a listing sold or change the listing to contingent or under contract, we could use this uh, sale button here. I'm just going to use 286412. Um, continue oh sorry about that so I can't actually go into listing since it's still in holdings all right I'm just gonna use a uh, listing as an example so continue from here we have the option of making our listing contingent, or under contract, or sold. If it's sold, we need to enter our sale terms, our sale conditions. We can enter our sold agent ID here, our contract date and our sold date, and also our sold price. I believe your buyer credit, your buyer credit remarks, and your sale condition remarks are, are not required. If we were to put a listing under contract, um, we'd need to set a, a contract date. And if we place it as contingent, we need to place a contingency type and a contract date. So if your listing is uh, withdrawn or temp withdrawn, we can use this back on market function to place the listing back on market. Since I don't have a listing, I, ha I can't actually do a back on market, but um, it's okay. If you wanted to delete a listing, we could use this delete listing function. Now we can only delete listings in our holdings. So once the listing is active, withdrawn, temp withdrawn, we can't delete it. We can only delete listings that have been that have been saved into our holdings. So this is a pretty pretty good function. Um, it's called copy. So a lot of times um in order to reset your days on market, you need to withdraw your listing for 30 days. And um, so once the listing's withdrawn, the, you have to create a brand new listing. So instead of creating the listing again, what we can do is we can actually say copy existing listing. So what you can do is you can copy your withdrawn listing. If we click copy, you can enter the MLS number and click continue. And what's going to happen now is it's going to bring up the old listing information. And once you click save, it's going to save the listing, give you a new MLS number. If you click release, it's going to be released to active. So you won't actually have to enter all the content in again. 
However, you will have to re-upload your photos, your virtual tours, or any addendas that are attached to the listing. So the only thing that gets transferred over is your content. And that's about it for your listings management. Um, my name is Sean from Hawaii Information Service. Uh, thank you for tuning in and have a great day.